George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. This is another in our series of uh, Chalk Talk videos where we do deep dives on uh, topics throughout the industry. Joining me today is George Simon, Chief Strategy Officer at Nexan Technologies. How are you doing, George? I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, before we jump into the whiteboard, give us a little background on Nexan. Sure. Nexan is one of the largest independent storage vendors in the marketplace today. We've been around about 12 years and really focused on reliable, dense storage for capacity. Um, initially targeting backup, archive environments, um, but we've continued to evolve our product line. We sell it through exclusively through channel partners, and um, today we have a very broad line of storage solutions. Great. Well, I know that, that for people that do know you, I think that density uh, is probably one of the uh, that uh, kind of very cost-effective storage is where they kind of experience you first. Can you kind of map through what that current product line looks like? Sure. Let, let's start with the E-Series. Okay. Okay. The, the E-Series is our SAN block-based storage. Mm -hmm. um, it comes in three different um, configurations. Easy to remember, the 18, 18 drives, 48 drive, 60 drive cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, we have expansion cabinets that come with them, so you can have multiple E18s, same thing with the 48. You know, you can have three 60 bay devices. Okay. Okay. We offer a wide variety of drives. Um, we've released the four terabyte drive, so if you think about it, in this 4U, you can have 240 terabytes. If you look at the combination of the three of them, that's 720 terabytes with a single set of controllers in front of it. Okay. That's the capacity side of it. You mentioned reliability, which, which is really key to this. If you have all of these drives, you need a reliable system. Right. So reliability is one of the most important things and we cover that in multiple ways. Number one is the mechanicals, right? The things that kill drives are vibration and temperature more mm -hmm. than anything else. Sure. So in the design of the E-Series, we do an awful lot to reduce vibration and to have extremely good airflow. The combination of these plus our own controller software to monitor the drives gives us about half the drive failures as the industry standard. So okay. again, Excellent reliability. Well, and I know in talking to you guys that you, uh, you know, you had this uh, kind of brutal testing procedure, and, and you you really disqualify a lot of vendors before they even get in the in the system, right? A absolutely, and we do it multiple times. So, number one, whenever there's a new drive that comes out from a vendor, mm -hmm. we've gone over the years and continually refined this process to make sure that we do qualify the drive. And if there are problems with new drives, which is what hurts a lot of companies, is you ship a new drive and it wasn't ready for prime time or it doesn't work quite right in the environment, we are able to disqualify them. But we go a step further, and before we ship any system, we test all the drives that are going to go into that system. So it's not just the drive type that we've qualified, it's mm -hmm. the individual drives that get qualified. So that each, each individual drive before it gets out to a customer has been tested before it even gets there. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. And I, I think that, you know, in my experience uh, in t dealing with Nexan customers, they, they sort of start with you guys as sort of the backup device, maybe the archive device, okay. um, and, and then suddenly they realize that that hasn't failed. Right, right. Uh, but my primary storage system keeps failing all the time, and you sort of kind of get this sort of up upflow almost effect in, in a customer environment. Is that is that a fair assumption? It, it is. We have very loyal customers, a lot of repeat purchases, and they do find that it's highly reliable. They get good performance out of it, and they do start moving it into their primary storage. If you think about it, it's the overall value proposition that this solution delivers. You get reliability. You get capacity. We have power management. So part of the total cost of ownership that drives it down is that we're able to reduce the power consumption based on policy. We can do simple things like take the heads out and remove them. We can slow down the spindle speed. We can stop a drive. We can power off one of these <coughs> ex expansion cabinets to the point it's only using 15 watts. So you get a lot of power savings. So you put all of it together, it provides a tremendous value for the customer. Okay, great. Well, I know also that you guys have been kind of moving into the, uh, the NAS unified market as well as embracing solid state technology. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. That's a relatively new product released earlier this year called the NST. So if, if you take the E-Series up here, just put it to the side for a second, the NST has three main we want to call them functions or values mm -hmm. that are unique um, from an exam point of view. Not that each individual one is, mm -hmm. but when you put them all together. Okay. So you mentioned unified. 
right? We do both NAS and SAN. Hybrid. And in hybrid, we use both SSD and we use NVRAM. So just for our uh, viewers, uh, I think most people are going to know that SSD is solid state drive. Right. Uh, just at a high level, what's NVRAM? So non volatile RAM. Okay. okay. So this is memory, DRAM type of memory, but if power goes out, you it, don't lose the information. You don't lose the data. Yet. Okay. That's right. And this gets used for writes. Okay. This gets used for reads. Right. So we're accelerating both reads and writes. Okay. Because historically, RAM is uh, much better at write performance than a flash. Uh, exactly. Right. Okay. And we don't want to forget dense, right? And that's the E series. Okay. So that's why it's important to understand. So we get unified, hybrid, and dense. And so I have performance. I have flexibility, and I have capacity. That's what makes the NST such a unique product. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that, that we're finding is it feels like almost every week or every other week we're getting briefed by somebody that has a new unified hybrid something, right? And maybe you guys are uh, on the dense part because that doesn't come up as often. But can you kind of give me some uh, re some differentiators of what makes your guys unified and, sure. and um, a hybrid store unique? Happy to do it. So let's start with the hybrid. Okay. Okay. We use the SSD and the NVRAM as cache. As I mentioned, read cache and write cache. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Number one, it's simple. I don't have to configure the environment. I don't have to figure out what data goes where. I don't have to set policies. It makes it easy to deploy. Right. That's number one. Number two is it works across all of the data. And it works instantaneously as a cache does. I don't have to propagate information, run it on a scheduled basis, all of that. So right. it's continually adapting to the environment. It's taking advantage of the SSD and the NVRAM across everything. Mm -hmm. Easy to use. And because of the way we use it, you don't need nearly as much SSD or NVRAM. So you know, at the high end of this, we're using 2.5 terabytes of SSD. Okay. So, not only do we get everything we talked about here because of this in the hybrid, we get a low cost per performance, a low price performance ratio. Okay. Right? Yeah, and one of the things that, you know, as we talk to readers and viewers of our site that we constantly are hearing is they've sort of bought into solid state as the performance technology. What they're really struggling with is how do I use it? And it sounds like you guys just make that real simple. We, we make it very simple. The other piece of it is, when I talk about price performance, you know, we're getting over 50,000, roughly 54,000 IOPS on this, IOs per second. Mm -hmm. and that's from a SAN or a block perspective. Okay. That's a very high number. Mm -hmm. You hear about a million IOPS, mm -hmm. and there are a few applications that can use a million IOPS, right. right? But the majority of the world who's trying to deal with VMware environments where you have mixed workloads, 50,000 IOPS is a lot more than most systems deliver. So it gives you the performance you need, but at a cost point that I can fit it into my environment. Right. Okay. Yeah. One of the things we always talk to people is a million IOPS is fine, but if you only needed, you know, 50,000 IOPS, you just wasted 950,000 IOPS on, you know, and that's right. money. And that's money. Right. That's exactly so, right. Okay. Great. On the unified side, um, again, we do SIFs. Back to the performance, we get 100,000 what are called spec ops, mm -hmm. okay, measuring of the operations for a file-based transaction. Um, we get this also with less than two millisecond latency. When, again, when we talk about performance here, one mm -hmm. of the things a lot of people ignore is latency. IOPS is an important number. Spec ops is an important number. The latency is also an important number. So you have to look at the whole picture. Right. Um, so we get very low latency when running our SAN and NAS solution there. Okay. Um, we, as mentioned, SIFs, we get you know, high performance on NFS. And then if you want to use iSCSI, we have that available as well. So you can get a combination of the block or the file system. And it's fully featured. So we do snapshots. We do asynchronous replication. We do synchronous replication. We have thin provisioning. All of the functions you'd expect from an array come with this unified solution. Okay, great. Well, uh, George, thanks for uh, joining us today and giving us a rundown on what's going on at Nexan Technologies. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate the opportunity. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.